So now we are going to move on to a pivotal part of alkyne chemistry, uh, and that is the generation of acetylide ions. And acetylide ions are going to take on this form where there is an alkyne, which has been deprotonated and bears a negative charge at the terminal carbon. So let's talk about why alkynes are acidic. So the hybridization, of course, of an alkyne carbon is sp, while that of an alkene is sp2, and an alkane is sp3. So the percentage of s character in an sp hybrid orbital is 50% s and 50% p. Whereas if it's sp2, one part s, two parts p, then it's going to be 33% s. And if it's sp3, one part s, three parts p, it is 25% s. And the pKa is going to scale uh, with the amount of s character. In other words, more s character means more electronegative. S orbitals are lower in energy. They lack a node at the nucleus, and electrons are uh, more stable when they are in orbitals with more s character, generally. So the pKa of an alkyne is generally 25 where an alkene is closer to 40 or 45, and an alkane can be as high as 55. So the most acidic of this series by far is the alkyne because of the sp hybridization and high electronegativity. So this proton can be deprotonated under certain circumstances. And what we can see now is that when we're comparing acidities of various atoms that are all the same size, we generally go based on electronegativity. The more electronegative is more acidic. Uh, however, it's not as simple as a periodic trend anymore. If the hybridizations are changing between the atoms being compared, then you must know the following uh, electronegativity of second row atoms. And I'm just gonna want you to memorize this scale here, where uh, sp3 fluorine is more electronegative than oxygen. And it's safe to say that oxygen is always more electronegative than carbon, uh, but generally it goes oxygen than nitrogen. However, we see that because sp carbon has that 50% s character, whereas sp3 nitrogen only has 25% s character, sp carbon is actually more electronegative. And the pKa's are going to scale and reflect this. So the pKa of HF is around three. An alcohol or water, that's between 15 and 20. An alkyne is about 25. An amine is in the mid 30s. An alkene is 40 or 45, and an alkane is as high as 55. So there's kind of a nice trend there where they increase by about 10 units in pKa after uh, the alcohol. So note that sp3 uh, oxygen right here is more electronegative and more acidic than sp carbon. But sp3 nitrogen is less electronegative than sp carbon, and therefore it's more basic. So we cannot use sodium hydroxide, we cannot use a more electronegative atom to deprotonate sp carbon, but we can use a less electronegative base, sodium amide. So let me show you two uh, theoretical acid base reactions below, and we'll talk about the one that works. So uh, sodium amide here has two reactive lone pairs, one of which will deprotonate the alkyne acid and generate an acetylide ion 
at carbon, where we now get the conjugate base ammonia. And ammonia has a pKa of roughly 38. The alkyne has a pKa of roughly 25. And therefore, uh, the equilibrium constant for generating this acetylide ion is 10 to the difference in pKa's or 10 to the positive 13, which means that reaction is irreversible. And you get 100% of this acetylide ion. So that is then going to be uh, useful for forming carbon-carbon bonds in a later step. And if you use sodium hydroxide to deprotonate, it's a vastly different result. We're now generation of the same acetylide ion gives a conjugate acid of water. And the sp3 oxygen is far more acidic with a pKa of 16. So now KEQ is a very small number, 10 to the negative 9. 16 minus 25. So that is actually product favored. And this alkyne remains protonated. So we cannot use sodium hydroxide or any O minus base to deprotonate an alkyne. It's too weak. Instead, we use this super base, sodium amide, to give nearly 100% of the desired acetylide product. So to quiz your understanding of this, uh, I just want to go through a few ranking problems where sp3 fluorine is the most electronegative, followed by sp3 oxygen. And then remember that typically nitrogen is next, but sp carbon, because of 50% s character, beats sp3 nitrogen. And then it follows in line where sp2 carbon and sp3 carbon or the least electronegative wall. So the most electronegative atom should have the most acidic proton attached, assuming all of these atoms are the same size. And that's true. These are all the second row atoms. So comparing an amine, which has a pKa generally of 35, an alcohol, which has a pKa of between 15 and 20, the alkane, which has a pKa in the 50s, Right, so this is sp3 carbon, sp3 oxygen, sp3 nitrogen, and then an alkyne where actually this allylic proton is acidic. That pK is about 40. It's acidic because of resonance stabilization of the conjugate base. HF has a pK of 3.2. And the proton at the sp carbon of the alkyne is a pKa of uh, 25. So the most acidic is going to be the most electronegative, followed by the next most electronegative, the oxygen, and then the sp carbon. And then the sp3 nitrogen, finally the allylic proton, and then uh, simply propane is the least acidic. So if we do the same type of ranking, but for basicity, okay, now the most basic should be the one that's the least electronegative or the most willing to donate electron density. So once again, we have an sp3 carbon, sp2 carbon, right? This one has a lone pair and a single hydrogen. This one has a single hydrogen and a lone pair as well, as well. The nitrogen has two lone pairs, oxygen has three, and fluoride has four. I'll just label these again so we can think about the atom that we're talking about in terms of basicity. So the most basic, okay, or the one that had the highest pKa from above is going to be 
uh, propane or this propane anion, followed by the sp2 carbon, followed by the sp3 nitrogen, and then the alkyne. The sp3 oxygen is highly electronegative, and the sp3 fluorine is the most electronegative. So be able to know these electronegativity trends and how they relate to hybridization. And uh, they will be relevant for synthesis problems that we will examine uh, in the following lecture. So for more practice uh, with alkyne acidity, uh, you can see unit two uh, of my Orgo one course guide at chemguides.com. You will also see some problems in unit one of my Orgo 2 course guide at chemguides.com. You can also find general acid base practice in unit one uh, and uh, unit one of both Orgo 1 and Orgo 2 course guides uh, with all different types of acids and bases uh, if you're confused about anything in this video.